It's a triumphant homecoming for the woman who helped create the Rose Lady series, as last week's winner, Liz Young, bids to go back to back in very familiar surroundings. We're here at Liz Young's home course, Brockenhurst Manor, for the third event of this year's Rose Lady series. Of course, this is where it all began last summer, and after that opening event, the tour has flourished. But yeah, I'm buzzing with all the support from Kate and Justin, and obviously all the sponsors, for it to have grown into this and series two. We're back here at Brockenhurst, my home club, like you said, where it all started. It just doesn't get any better. Also teeing it up this week is Gemma Dryber. She won two Rose Ladies events last year. Very good memories from last year, winning twice and then also starting here at Brockenhurst again. Um, it was our first one last year, so very good memories coming back. And then I started well going back to America after the Rose Series and got first top 10 on the LPGA, so it was just perfect for me. Chloe Williams has shown strong form already this year, including a runner-up finish at Woburn. I've got off to a great start um, after so long without playing. Um, no expectations, um, just really wanted to get enjoy and get back into it and very grateful to have these events to, you know, prepare myself for ready to go back on tour. Brockenhurst Manor is a Harry Colt design nestled in the New Forest. It's defended by its tricky and undulating greens. Totally different to what we've played the last couple of weeks. I think the ultimate test was last week at Woburn. Um, I mean, it was long, narrow, uh, fast greens, everything. So here it feels a little bit wider, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to playing today. It's keeping it on the fairway, that's the key. Keeping it in play, it's not long course, so you know, we just keep it, keep it safe. And um, the pins can be a bit tricky, but um, hopefully they've been kind to us today. No one knows this course better than Liz Young, and she had plenty of support from the volunteers as she got her round underway. Sophie Stone got off to a good start with a birdie at the par five second, but the University of South Florida alumnus would double bogey the fourth before riding the par train to the turn in 36 shots. First year pro Talia Martin traded a birdie at the first with a bogey at the third before getting back under par here at the fourth. She would make a bogey and a birdie on the next two holes. Rosie Davis drove the green on the 311 yard first hole. Her eagle putt just ran out of steam, but she would tap in for her three, although she gave that shot back on the fifth. Germany's Laura Fumpstuck, who's had nine top tens on the LET in the last two seasons, hit this stupendous second into the first of the par fives. Unfortunately, she missed that eagle opportunity and had a bogey at the next to slip back to level par. Gemma Clues birdied the second and bogeyed the fourth before a cracking approach set up this birdie at the sixth. 26-year-old Samantha Giles was quick out of the blocks as she poured this one in for birdie and got to two under with another on six, but bogeys at eight and nine would see her back to even par. Chloe Williams dropped a shot with this power lip out on the first and then parred her way to a front nine of 36 strokes. Liz Young got off to a steady start with five straight pars, aided by this fine approach on the fourth, which played as the second hardest hole on the course. Whitney Hillier put a confident stroke on this birdie effort at the opening hole and made pars on the second and third. The Australian then set up this four-footer for her three at the fourth and made one of only three birdies at that hole all day. She certainly seemed to have the measure of the putting surfaces early in her round. Those two birdies have given Hillier the early lead and 2019 women's amateur champion Emily Toy is one under par after a couple of holes. There are seven golfers bunched at level par. As we go out onto the course with Liz Young here at the sixth, her second shot from the center of the fairway.
Oh, straight at it. Hurt by a little bit of spin there, but that's going to set up a good look at birdie. Hillier, our leader, again in prime position to make another birdie on the seventh. You can see some quite dark clouds up there. It was very overcast. No rain just yet, though. And that's fantastic. The way she's been putting, she will fancy that one. Becky Brewerton's been cruising along nicely. She's one over par. This for a round of level par 70. Yeah. Oh, and in it goes for the Welsh woman. She's really been struggling the last few years, but drawing on all of her experience from those two Solheim Cup appearances. And that's a really nice round of 70. <laughs> she looks relieved. Hillier to extend her lead at the top. Just a little shy. You could see the ridge it was coming up. Liz Young. With a similar looking part on the sixth. Oh, beautiful. A really steady stroke there. Keeps the club head square so well through the ball. We've seen lots of that in recent weeks with her form. Laura Fumstuck now. She started really, really well. Has given them back, though. Really wants to get the momentum going again. And that could be the shot that does it. We have seen how slow that putt is from Hillier just before. But she's confidently striding towards another birdie opportunity. Fantastic to see all the volunteers out there. Really well supported. All of these Rose Lady Series events. Great turnouts from the club members to support them. Rachel Drummond, this is a really long one. Oh, and she won't like the work she's left herself there. That's a good six feet left. A first look at Brogan Townend now, and she's on the 18th. Hot off of a birdie on 17. This could post a really good number at one under par. Oh, it just wriggles away on the left side. So she will join Becky Brewerton at level par in the clubhouse. Still lots of golf to be played, but that's not a bad total. Laura Funkstuck, who's on that number, but out on the course at the seventh. We saw the good approach. And not for the first time we see someone coming up just short on an uphill putt. Drummond. Can she finish this six footer off? Oh, that's really well done. Always tricky when you leave it so short like that. You doubt your pace on the greens. You can see she's very happy to see that one drop. Playing alongside her Funkstuck to tidy up her par. Very good. She remains right in the hunt at level par. Hillier has been joined at the top by Emily Toy on two under. Experienced players and the youngsters have this opportunity to compete thanks to the efforts of Kate and Justin Rose. It's been really fun to be a part of it. It's been really fun to be creative and try and think up what would be the best fit for the ladies, where, where the schedule could go, um, trying to be a bit more inclusive around the country now that we're not quite so locked down with COVID as we were last time. We were never trying to be something huge. We we're trying to be a, a platform for them to then go off and, and be able to achieve when they get the opportunity with the big tournaments. It's all to play for at the picturesque Brockenhurst Manor. Liz Young secured her first professional win at Woburn last week. She's gunning for back-to-back -back Rose Lady Series titles at her home club, but the competition is fierce. Sophie Stone had this for her birdie at the final hole. Not quite the perfect finish. That simple tap-in would close out her 72. 
It was a very consistent day's work with 15 pars, a birdie, a bogey, and double bogey on the scorecard. A couple of shots went for Rachel Drummond at 11 and 12, so she arrived on the 17th at three over par. This absolute bomb got her back to plus two. It had been a tough day for Gemma Dryborough with four bogeys and a double in her first eight holes. But she got the ball dancing around the hole as she made her first birdie of the day on the par 5 16. The early leader Hillier stumbled around the turn with drop shots at 8, 9 and 11. Another went at 16 before she righted the ship with this wonderful birdie on the dogleg 17th. Talia Martin was another player who made bogeys through that tough stretch in the middle of the round. But this terrific birdie on the last had her home in level par for a 71. Well worth a fist pump and a big smile. Young was now looking like the most likely challenger to Brewerton and Townend in the clubhouse. After bogeys at 9 and 10, she stopped the bleeding with this vital 12-footer for par on the 11th to stay at 1 over. The momentum was back with her as pars followed on the next two holes, and this birdie at the 291-yard 14th got her into a tie for the lead. Young would also par the 16th to sit alongside Brewerton and Townend with a couple of holes left to play. Talia Martin and Hillier there on plus one, Hillier going up the 18th. And that's where we join her with this birdie putt to get to level par. Oh, that's a big swing right across the face of the hole. I think she thought she had it. And I did too with a few feet left, but that shows just how much movement there is around the cup on that 18th hole. Another very strong finish from Hillier though off the back of a fourth place last week at Woburn. Dryborough now hybrid in hand going into the 17th. She's got some form, finished 5th and 15th on the Symmetra Tour over in America already this year. Oh, she lost her balance a little bit, but that is right at the target. A fantastic approach there. Rachel Drummond at plus two with this for birdie on the 18th. If this one drops, that would get her into a tie for fourth currently. Not quite, but she will tap that one in. Building nicely. She finished last year well, ninth in the grand final. She's been there or thereabouts in all three events so far this year. Liz Young, a bit closer on the 17th than Drybra was. It will take some shot to get inside her playing partner, though. Oh, that's a little bit short. That's going to be a really long putt, and it is quick there as well. That all slopes from left to right. There'll be a big swing on that birdie putt. Laura Fumstuck, well, she's just fallen away a bit. Plus three now. Can she finish on a high, though? Oh, I'm not quite sure how that didn't go in. I'd be checking that for cellophane across the top of the, the cup there. But in it drops, a 73. A story of what might have been. It was a fast start. Missed that early eagle opportunity. And never quite got the momentum back in her way from there. This is that long swinging birdie putt for Young. Thinking more about getting down in two from here though. And she will have to grind if she wants to do that. Gemma Driver to convert that fantastic approach, she does. 
But a wonderful fight back from her this afternoon. Shows the mental strength. Would have been really easy just to go away and fall out of contention completely. But there's a lot to be taken from this back nine. Here's that testing par putt for Liz Young then. Oh, that's superbly done. That keeps her in a tie for the lead, heading to the 18th tee. Well worth that smile. A look of relief as she hands the putter back to her husband, Jonathan, on the bag. Liz Young then needs a birdie up the last to get a dream win on her home course. If she makes a par, we're heading for a three-way sudden death playoff. The 18th hole behind me measures 333 yards, but it plays slightly uphill and it's into the breeze today, so it does play a little bit longer. Off the tee, you want to favour the left-hand side to open up that second shot into the green, but beware of that bunker. Once you're in play, that pin is 26 yards onto the putting surface. Just five yards short of that, there's a little ridge. You've got to get it up over that and onto the right tier, otherwise you'll be facing a very slow putt for birdie. Gemma Dryber, she's down the right-hand side of the 18th here with her tee shot. Some trees to go over. She hoists that up. Doesn't seem to have any problems. Oh, that's a fantastic little bounce in off the cushion. Young, the perfect angle after finding the left centre of the fairway. Oh, that's an absolutely stunning shot. Just carried that ridge, got the little hop forward. And that can't be anything more than three feet for the victory. The Rose Ladies series heads to the Berkshire next week before a little break. Then we're back with a bang with four events in six days in early August and three events at North Hants, the Bucks and Bearwood Lakes to close out the season. Here's Dryber up on the green after that lovely little bounce in off the apron. Can she make the most of it? Had the line, but not quite the legs. Easy tapping though. And that leaves the way clear for Liz Young coming straight in to put her ball down. Yeah. Kate Rose there watching on. She's been a member of Brockenhurst Manor since she was 12 years old. She'll have dreamt of this part. Oh, but that is the thing of nightmares. That will not be what she dreamed of. She'll no doubt be thinking back to last year when she lost in a playoff right here to Charlie Hull. That miss on 18 will be a tough pill to swallow for Young, but she gets a second chance as the top three will head back out onto the course to find a winner. After that dramatic ending, we have got a sudden death playoff. It's Brogan Townend, Liz Young and Becky Brewerton. They're back to the 18th tee. In regulation, Brewerton made birdie in the first group out. Townend and Liz Young, they both had fantastic opportunities to get the job done there and then. They couldn't quite do it, but which of the three will get their hands on the trophy in sudden death? Kate Rose was on hand to conduct the draw to see what order the ladies would play in. Brewerton and Townend both went right. But the home favourite Young found the ideal spot in the left half of the fairway. Brewerton had to chip out from the trees, but she played this superb third and would make her par. Townend had a long look for birdie, but that would put the brakes on a couple of feet short and she'd also make four. That left Young with another putt to win from 25 feet. That ridge took all the steam out of her effort, 
She would make that putt from a similar position to her birdie attempt in regulation. As the volunteers watched on, the trio headed back to the tee. And Young again found a similar spot down the left-hand side of the fairway, opening up this flag. Perhaps a little bit of adrenaline flowing now, though, as that has carried too far. That will be a slow putt from the apron at the back of the green, and she doesn't look too impressed. A bit mystified, if anything. Brewerton also going in from a lovely angle. Just out of the first cut, so this might not spin as much. Oh, she's judged that release very nicely. Trouble here for Brogan Townend. Certainly not aiming where the flag is, trying to negotiate these trees. Well, that's got some heat on it. It needs to sit down. I think that stopped just before the really thick, horrible stuff there, but she'll still have a lot of work to save a par. Oh, that's just dead out of there. You could see the club face grabbed a lot of grass between club and ball. You sense this really needs to go in for her to stay in this playoff. It's a fine effort. It was online. But that four-footer will be for bogey. And with Young now putting for birdie and Brewerton even closer, Townend's race might be run. Oh, that's shy. It's just another one of those four-footers. You wonder what's going through Liz Young's mind, having already missed something very similar to win it. Brewerton now. This is her chance to get a win that would seal a really good bounce back after a tough few years. Oh, it just eases its way down. That was never getting to the hole, but she's safely in for her four. So it asks the question of Liz Young. Four feet to extend the playoff. Oh, and that went left very early. She'll tap in for her five. And that means Becky Brewerton is our champion. She was in the first group out this morning. Nine hours after she teed off, she receives her trophy and the winner's check from Kate Rose. That beaming smile shows what it means to her. I've nearly given up a few times. It's, it's not been a, a good few years. When you've been through the real low times and you, you know, terrified you can't break 80 or 90, never mind winning anything, I think it gives you a better appreciation. So I actually quite enjoyed the playoff and I had, a, whereas before maybe when I was younger, I might have, you know, been taking it a bit too seriously. I know that sounds odd to say, um, but I was, I felt quite free and just thought what will be will be is too, too many things have happened in my long career for me to start worrying about the stuff. I'm too tired to worry about stuff like that now. It was a tense finish at Brockenhurst Manor. Oh, so close for the home favourite, Liz Young. But it was Becky Brewerton who got over the line in the sudden death playoff. Congratulations, Becky. And we will see you next time from the Berkshire.